some man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. We Friend. 
a child of God. Sing I'm no longer left to fear. I hear the I'm no longer a slave to fear.
Somebody raise your voice and talk to God. I feel no evil. Oh, 
The Bible says you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Oh, Pando Zagotala Paranega Sokatalapa, but a spirit of power, sound mind, and love. Maho Ziga Baladega Zo, in the place of whom we cry, Abba Father. He shamanerego zagalalalalaba, sorerego salalalalalalego, sereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredereredere
of my own But oh, He came to me In peace And held me in his arms And said to me I'll find true love And said to me I found true love For it has been since then I'll be my father's child When I received his son
your name and tell him praise God. People in the back, get your seats quickly. I want to see every man and woman and the sound of my voice seated. Where there are more seats in the back, you can get them. Kindly get your seats. Uh-huh. Happy New Year. Oh my goodness, you all look new. It's like you just fell from heaven. Oh my goodness. We feel strong. We feel healthy. We feel ready to start the year. Glory to God. We're exuberant. We're excited, we're elated, scintillated, kazungu. Praise God. By the way, we are fasting for 40 days. Some of you, the way you are singing, you look, don't look like you are fasting. You can tell somebody who is fasting. Somebody who's fasting sings like, what I lack. And somebody who's full of food is like, what I lack. 40 days, we began on what? Second. Tomorrow evening. Five, six, seven. We're going to be praying. No talking, no nothing. I know on prayer days, you are few. For two reasons. Many of you don't know how to pray. And some of you are not fasting. But whether they are 10 or 12, the cameras will be on. Praise the Lord. We are not going to be streaming it on YouTube. 
But we're going to be streaming it on Manifest Television. Meaning that for those of you who are across the country, across the world, who want to uh, uh, be a part of this praying, you download the mobile application of Fanero. In there, live television is on. So you're not going to miss a thing. Okay? You go on Fanero, you download the uh, mobile application, you go to live TV. It's always live. So those of you who want to join us from, you know, Europe, USA, America, wherever you are, you're going to tune on in that way. And you'll be able to what? To watch us. How many of you are here for the first time? Wave. You're visiting for the first time. That's a funeral welcome for you. Hallelujah. Um, tomorrow I'm going to be flying to Nigeria. Praise the Lord. So I have sessions over the weekend. Pray for us as we pray for you. Somebody say glory. Uh huh. Um, Lira, we are excited. How many of you are going with me to Lira? Are you sure? Put up your hand again. You're going to be in Lira? My goodness, Lira is in trouble. We're going to see the biggest crusade northern Uganda has ever seen. And the Lord is speaking to us to go to South Sudan. I got an invitation last evening. I'm planning with a team. We're soon going to do the biggest crusade that nation has ever seen. On that soil. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Me too. Me too. Let me bless our offerings. Father, I thank you. For the most generous people in the world. I pray that you'll supply all their needs. According to your riches and glory. In Christ Jesus. And all sin said. Amen. Now, what I'm going to teach today is not uncommon to people who have walked in faith for so many years, but it is strengthening. It is revealing and redeeming. And for those who do not know the way of faith, it will revolutionize the way you understand God. I'm sure, even if you're not a pastor like me, you have been around somebody saying, what happened? I believed, like the pastor told us, like the Bible tells us, like the book I read, I believed. I followed every step of faith like I'm told in scripture. But my person did not heal. I have, you hear somebody say, I have believed God for so many years. I've confessed right, did this right. But diabetes has failed to leave my body. Hypertension has failed to leave my body. This back has failed to heal. What am I missing? I have believed, they say. I have believed. Oh, I believed for my father and I prayed and fasted and did everything. And, but they died. What did I miss? Now recently, as a result of the new breed of Christianity, which I usually call neo-Pentecostalism, this thing that only reveals God from the perspective of logic and reason, or mostly logic and reason, which is so liberal in its approach, it tends to give answers with fallen wisdom because it is politically correct to comfort certain people that way. I'll give you an example. Recently I watched in awe as a certain preacher was sharing and he said we're teaching people how to walk the walk of faith. This is what he said. He said, we're teaching people how to walk the walk of faith. But we're not teaching them what to do if it fails. He said, we're not teaching them if 
they prayed for their mother and their mother did not heal what they were to do next. Or if they prayed for that job and they didn't get it or that healing and they did not receive it, what were they to do next? And for them, the realistic approach is that we should teach people to accept and to a sad extent, mostly even things that are not in the will of God biblically. But because many people by experience can allude to these results and experiences, then perhaps they have a solid qualification, either by age or theology, to say, I think this is the way. And of course, many people believe them by reason of their age, theology, or any other credentials, are not necessarily what the word of God says. I always told people that there's one thing that I fear most is that they will all finally understand <laughs> this mystery of salvation. I dread that day. Not in a bad way, but in a good way. Because I wonder what the world will do when a child of God has fully understood their jurisdiction, their legal, their logical right, and applied it according to scripture, and not what the world has taught them to accept or respond. That day, oh my goodness, I look forward to it, but I have a lot of fear. Not bad fear, good fear what it will look like. One man sang, I can only imagine. Are you following what I'm saying? So as we continue to teach these things, we hope that, or believe that the church every other day is being perfected, edified, prepared for this work of ministry. And our generation has chosen, when I say generation, I don't mean young people. I'm talking about everybody alive, <laughs> whether you're 78 or 90 or 25, has chosen to believe God for his word. Say amen, somebody. So back to the question, why doesn't it work? Why is it not working? Why didn't it work? When I was learning the way of faith, because primarily one of the pillars set on the mandate of my life is the teaching of faith. And as a younger man trying to grow up in the things of God, I always found myself in this state where I was wondering, why hasn't it worked? As I grow and grow and grow, I rarely wonder or ask myself, are these questions were many when I was growing early. Now I have more and more answers, way more answers. And one day, in asking God this question, he made a very strong statement, yet in the simplest language, that changed the way I saw faith. And it's in Colossians, Chapter 1. The Bible says, if you will read in verses 21, this is the condition, the only condition primarily, God has given you to have answers, to have results, to have success in your faith. This is important if you don't forget it. Because many times I've repeated it, reiterated it, tried to elucidate it, but it seems as though every other day the language becomes deeper and deeper because it's important for us to understand the core. He says in verses 21, the Amplified Version says, You are at one time estranged and alienated from Him, who God, and were of hostile attitude. Of mind in your wickedness. Verses 22. Yet now. Meaning you are not what you used to be. Somebody say amen. That's important. Heaven I see you the way you used to be. 
Yet now, listen, has Christ the Messiah reconciled you to God in the body of his flesh through death in order to present you holy one and faultless to and irreproachable in he in the father's presence now listen this is very important now when you receive now i'm talking to people who are born again if you're not born again this is not your someone but when you receive christ it will become yours when you receive jesus christ as your lord and savior Bible says God reconciled you to himself. That means you and God are at peace, not by your works, but by the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The Bible calls him the propitiation. Propitiation means the perfect sacrifice of our sins. Not only for us, the Bible says, but for the whole world. Are you following? So you were reconciled with God. Then no matter how you feel, it doesn't matter the circumstances of your life. The fact that you are born again, you're not being reconciled. And you're not disconnected from God because of your weakness. This is a hard one, but it is true. Why? Because you see, the righteousness of God upon you is not by works. It's by faith in Christ Jesus. How many of you believe that? So if your righteousness... The righteousness you have in God is by faith in Christ Jesus, not on two works. Romans chapter 3. But now the righteousness which is of God has been revealed or is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is what? By what? By works? No. He says, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, and to what? All and upon all who believe for all have sinned and fall or come short of the glory of God being justified freely through the redemption which is in Jesus Christ. Somebody say I'm reconciled to God. Say it again. I'm reconciled. So if you're born again, you are reconciled. It is an error to tell a New Testament believer to reconcile with God. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? Oh, but what do you mean? What if I stop praying and then I stop fasting and then I stop doing that? Are they still a believer? Yes, they are reconciled. They are reconciled. I know this is hard for you to, to see that because many of you judge men after the flesh. But... If somebody is born again, if any man be in Christ, that man is reconciled with God. That's what the Bible says. For if any man be in Christ, that man is what? Is a new creature. Old things are, read your Bible, passed away. And all things are become new. And all things are of God. Who has what? Did he say he's reconciling? Has what? Pastor has reconciled us unto himself by Jesus Christ and he has given unto us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. So it's an error to say that because somebody is weak in one area, therefore they are, they are not reconciled with God. No. No. They're just not walking in continuous fellowship with him. But because they're not walking in continuous fellowship with him, it does not mean he's not reconciled with them. Are you following what I'm saying? It's like you might have somebody who is not talking to you, but you don't have any issue with them. Do you, do, are you following? Or you can have somebody who is not talking to you because you have issues. Or if you have issues with God, he doesn't have issues with you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because this is love. God is love. So yes, if somebody has, for example, been away from church, they're not praying, they're not fasting, they're not doing anything, they're disconnected, they're not you know, intimately relating with God, they're not fellowshipping, as the Bible tells us. This we tell, rebuild your fellowship with God, not reconcile, because you're not at war. 
Christ. Every time God looks at Christ, he sees that reconciliation. And he's not going to break himself in pattern and person because you are indifferent. No, that's who you are. That's not God. And some people build doctrines around their patience. So they're only as patient as far. And because now they run out of patience with certain individuals, they assume that God is also out of patience with those individuals. Ha <laughs> ha. Let me laugh at you. In Spanish. Are you following what I'm saying? We are reconciled. Somebody said we are reconciled. Now let's continue with this. Verses 23. Now, I want us to, to, to go back up there. I want, let me read from verse 22. Yet now has Christ the Messiah reconciled you to God in the body of his flesh through his death in order to present you holy huh, and faultless and irreproachable in the Father's presence. And this he will do provided that you continue to stay in the faith in Christ. In the faith in Christ. That means, as long as you still believe in Jesus Christ, this is a guarantee that you're reconciled with God. Who understands what I'm saying? As long as you continue, the Bible says, to stay with and in the faith in Christ, well grounded and settled and steadfast, not shifting or moving away from the hope which rests on and is inspired by the glad tidings, the gospel, which you had and which has been preached as being designed for and offered without restrictions. Did you hear that? It is offered without restrictions to every person under heaven and of which gospel I, Paul, became a minister. Now let me explain this so you understand this. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you are reconciled with him, on top of that, God tells you now that you are going to have to continue to stay with and in the faith in Christ. You have to keep a certain life of faith in Christ to continue, not to disconnect. This is what I mean. If you are born again, for example, and then you say, I am born again, right? But you have your issues, but you're born again. And you can still recognize your place of salvation. Steadfast in that hope of the gospel, which is preached. You are a believer in your spirit, regardless of what happened. The point is, continue being steadfast. Continue believing what you believe in the first place. Now, that is different from the person who says, I no longer believe in salvation. Do you understand what I'm saying? Usually, I've noticed when, if somebody can denounce Christ, the biggest chance is that at, in the first place, they never knew him. It's it, most of the time. The people who say, uh -uh, I'm done with this thing called salvation. Usually they never understood it. They never understood it. They never understood it. Because you cannot understand Jesus. Eh? And say tomorrow, I've denounced salvation. Eh? Well, there's a young man I met once. Used to even preach. And I think somebody brought some doctrine in him. And the boy says he doesn't believe in God. You know, those are things the spirit realm has no words for. What do you say? Where do you even begin from? Do you ask them, why don't you believe in God? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because salvation is an experience. How many of you understand what I'm saying? There are things you, we might never, you might never be able to explain to people. All you know is that inside there, in your spirit in there, there is a witness of God and what Jesus has done at the cross that you might never explain to somebody beyond what they are able to read only in, in, in word. Christ is an experience. 
Are you following what I'm saying? Christ is an experience. Fall in any way. But never fall to a place of denouncing salvation. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Never. Never. Fall in a way. Make every mistake in the world. But not the error. Of grieving the person of the spirit. To a place actually of rejecting him. Because I've seen people who have rejected him. What more sacrifice is there left. For people who denounce. That's why I told people heaven will shock people. There are people who you don't think are born again, but you reach heaven and they're they taking tea. And there are people who you think are so born again and you look for them in heaven and you'll be like, hey. But I thought she was. Because salvation is of the word. Is of the heart. God tells you continually be grounded and settled steadfast. Never shift or move away from the hope which rests on or is inspired by the good news which you have had and has been preached to you. Never move away from that. Now, as this works for salvation, that's a mystery on salvation. I re the Lord showed me that that's the same mystery in living the life of faith. For any other thing in the world. Now that you have received Christ. The way you have received Christ. Okay. Comma. The Bible says walk ye in him. In other words. The way, the way you have kept your salvation. The way, you be, the way God says you are okay. If you continue believing. Steadfast and grounded in the hope of the gospel that you are born again and that Jesus shed his blood for you and that doesn't leave you regardless of your weaknesses. That's a sure chance, an opportunity for God to deal with you and restore you. Now, if that works for salvation, now this is for salvation. Even the work of faith is like that. The way you just don't wake up and denounce Jesus the way you just don't wake up in salvation and say, now I'm done with these things. The way God appeals to you to be steadfast and firm in your faith in Christ. He says, like you have received this Jesus as you have received him, the way it works here in salvation. He says, it's the same way it works in faith. What do I mean? When you enter the thing, this thing called faith, who is getting where I'm getting? Who is getting where I'm getting to? The way you receive Christ and you cannot denounce him. You cannot doubt him. You, you are immovable. You are steadfast. In spite of anything, you say, ah, may I have my issues, but I am born again. And I believe that Jesus shed, shed his blood for my sins. He says, that's the same way you should live the life of faith. Who has understood? You have to live a continuous and unbroken pattern when it comes to faith. Like somebody would denounce Jesus. Some of you live a life of faith where today you're believing that you're healed. And the next day, you start to doubt what you prayed last evening. Who understands what I'm saying? You, 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 you are you, in Fanero when they are preaching <laughs> Hey, you're standing up with knots. You're calling me out, pastor. But, but the landlord or, or a disease comes and you're like, oh. And then somebody comes for counseling and they tell you, I've failed to heal. Huh? When you say, I believe I'm healed. And then tomorrow you say, the disease has refused to leave. You're like a person who says, I'm born again. Uh -uh, I'm not born again. Oh, I believe in Jesus that he shed his blood for me. Uh -uh, no, I don't believe that he shed his blood for me. That's exactly how it looks like. As you have received Jesus Christ, walk ye in him also. 
the way it is for salvation. The way it is that you cannot deny or denounce salvation. So it is with the walk of life. That is why examine yourself privately. Don't look at your neighbor, your sister, your cousin. Don't point fingers. Look at yourself. You realize where things have failed to change in your life. At one particular point in your bed at night or at 10 p.m. or in your office or your living room in the car, somewhere you cracked. There was a time it cracked. I believe, I believe. And then something just, you say, but it is not working. That one, that, that, that moment, that moment is likened to somebody who says, but I don't think Jesus died for my sins. And, and you know, some people, they, there's this thing in the world they call emotionally present. That thing is good, but sometimes it can become so carnal. Let me explain what I mean. As a husband, you have to be emotionally present to your wife, isn't it? As a child, you have to be emotionally present to your family. You understand? In every aspect at your workplace, you have to be emotionally present. Are you following what I'm saying? But, when it comes to the work of faith, God has not called you to be emotionally present. Because if you walk according to your feelings, you will die. That's what the Bible says, not me. The Bible says, if you walk according to your flesh, you shall die. Be emotionally present to your people, your relationships. But when it comes to faith, faith is not emotional. Some of you think that you're going to go in the presence of God. Jesus! And then you fall down. Help me! That's not faith. You cry. You continue crying. And some of you, you don't, you don't weep in, in speech. You weep in songs. I will not sing some of those songs. I will not sing. <laughs> and then Sir Christian, reminding God to, rem to remember. That. Yeah? Yeah? He said, a mother shall forget her own child. But I will never forget you. Somebody's telling Jesus to remember them. Why me? Why me, Lord? Why me? So I've had I've had the opportunity of hearing or listening to ministers sometimes become emotionally present such that they can become a few things to, to all men. And, but this is what I've realized. That we can become all things to all men, but not in unbelief. We don't go... God has told us to become all things to all men. In other words, if you want to win a fisherman, go fishing. You understand? But they mean that because you want to serve a thief, you're still with him. <laughs> that's what some people think. But that's exactly how some people sound. So you hear a pastor saying, sometimes... I doubt. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you two doubt, don't you? And they go. <laughs> Not in front of all. Say it. No, 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 by gaining in unbelief to connect. No, no, no. No. Are you following what I'm saying? That one, I'll keep it on myself. I'll not tell the story unless it has an end of victory and a lesson to teach. But if it has no lesson to teach, uh -uh, just to melt affections, you know, we are all in the same boat. We are. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, you are alone. Me, I'm out with Peter. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you cannot denounce Jesus, you cannot draw back on your faith. 
Again, I repeat, if at one point you examined yourself and it did not work, go search. There was a point where you gave up. There was a point where you were pushed and cracked. Nobody saw it. They just had you confessing, I am okay, I am okay. But inside there, something is cutting. The Bible says somewhere in, uh, I believe, James chapter 1, verses 25. Whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, comma, and continueth therein, that word, continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Who is a forgetful hearer? Somebody who disconnects from something they believe and confesses otherwise. Or at least, at least, at least. If unbelief has hit you, don't speak out your fear. Have you been around somebody who is, they are, they are voicing their fear, but in a way of trying to find common ground eh? to, to reconcile that they're not alone in this. Eh? Huh? They fail to believe God for finances and then they make a statement like, aha, <laughs> I don't know, but money is scarce. Uh, have you been around such people? <laughs> I don't know, but have you noticed? They throw it back at you. Have you noticed that lately everyone has stomach ache? Oh, no, no. It's only you, Monica. It's you only. <laughs> have you noticed? So I'm say, have you noticed? I think my lights go on to see what I'm supposed to notice. Now, this is the problem. They say it and you've also been having stomach ache. And you say, Wama! Ah. <laughs> Those of you are watching from across the world, Wama means, how do you translate that? <laughs> hey, rep the pastor. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, something like that. Oh, yeah. It means, oh, yeah. Uh -huh. So it says, Wama! I've also been feeling, and then it extends, me too. Then the me too movement begins. <laughs> now, if you are if you are feeling it and somebody next to you has said it, have you noticed lately there is a bag of stomach cake? This is why you say, huh? Act surprised, really. That's a believer. Come on, somebody. That's a what? That's a believer. This listen, that little statement can kill you. That little sentence can kill you because your mouth has confessed it. Your mouth has said it. If you get to a point where you're so afraid, I repeat, at least don't say it. Call it something else. Find a way of explaining it. Call it that thing. But don't give it a name. Because there is, there is this thing God requires of you to continue in. Because somebody says, I don't believe in Jesus. That reconciliation is gone because they've disconnected. That's the only condition. Regardless of your weaknesses, if you have not denounced him, that reconciliation is there. Same as it is. That regardless of what you're going through, if you have not confessed or recognized it in your heart, regardless of the pain you're going through, that mercy for your deliverance is available. It's still available. Oh, what if I messed it up? Repent and reconcile yourself. That's where now we, we you understand what I'm saying? And say, you know what? Now this time, no. It's because some of you live that way. You, you've heard this message, but you just need two days. And you hear a very hard statement like, ah, uh, uh, me, mm -mm. marriage is not for me. Why? Why do you say that? 
Because somebody has messed your head up. You've disqualified yourself from marriage. You've understood it, say amen. Somebody makes a general statement. Me, I think marriage is not for me. Hey, okay, stamped, heaven. <laughs> Disqualified from marriage. And after they say that, tomorrow on marriage conference, they tune on. For what? You said marriage is not yours. Wait for the summons on breakthrough, miracle signs and wonders, living above the Babylonian system. Wait for those ones. When the marriage conferences go on, don't switch on because you say marriage is not for you. Am I teaching? He said continue therein the perfect love liberty. Once you gaze into it, if you continue in it, the Bible says not being a forgetful hearer. How can you not be a forgetful hearer? How can you not be a forgetful hearer? By being a consistent hearer. Consistent. That's why you're listening to someone's every day, every week, every month. You're pumping yourself so you don't forget. You don't forget you. You're allowing the word of God to saturate and take in. You're taking in. Some of you don't know what this is saving you from. But even as you're sitting here, there's something you're pumping in your spirit. That one day, something will come attacking. And it will find you ready. Somebody shout amen. Jesus is about to go, so he tells Peter, Peter, Luke 22, 31, Simon, Satan has desired to have you. Simon, 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 Satan has desired to have you. Interestingly, not Peter. There's a mystery there. That he may sift you as what? As wheat. And Jesus told this man, but I have prayed for you. He didn't say that that thing will go. He said, I've prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. The Greek word there is breaks not. That your faith, in spite of all you're going through, it does not break. That at one point it's not choked into unbelief. That's all he could pray. Because he knows if Peter can keep his faith continuous, one day the Bible says he will be converted and he will strengthen uh, his brethren. He'll strengthen. One, one day, it might take two years, three years, it might take four weeks, four months, but eventually one day he shall be strengthened. Co I'm sorry, he shall be converted and he shall strengthen his brethren. He shall strengthen his brethren. Jesus did not look at what was going to attack Peter because that wasn't the issue. Nothing, nothing, whether it's disease or incurable or not. He didn't look at what would hit Simon. He was just looking at this man's faith because to God, that's the most important thing. I don't care what your house is going through. I don't care what is in your body. I don't care how your heart feels like at 2 a.m. How it pumps wrong. How the blood moves wrongly. How you can't sleep. I don't care what the doctor has written on the paper. But your faith. He says that your faith failed in not. And then they fall sick. And then they worsen. And then they watch. You study everybody who has died before their time. And some even on their time. But before their time, majority. There is that point where they gave up. You go study your relatives if you are there when they're about to die. And then they'll say, let me go. Ah, it's broken. Or they'll say, ah, I don't think I can take this pain anymore. Or they'll say, I can't bear this. Oh, I've had enough. Oh, I give up. It's always there. You study, look for it. You'll find it. You look at your loved ones who died before time. There was a point where they cracked and their faith failed them. Because you see, Satan can push you. He can push you. He can push you to a point where you will, with your mouth, condemn yourself. Because he knows he can't kill you. He knows it. 
He knows that sin can't kill you. He knows that he was defeated. He knows it. Not going to be, not might be, not will be, not could be. He knows that he was defeated. He knows that nothing favors him. And he knows that life and death are in the power of the tongue. Life has no power. Death has no power. But the tongue has power. He knows it. Proverbs 18.21 Death and life are in the power of the tongue. He knows that he can't kill you if you're not ready. Regardless, the Bible says that the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. His weakness. The spirit of a man will say, oh, is it the Amplified? It says the strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble. The strong. I love that he added the word strong. He's not talking about every spirit. Some of you, you are, your spirits are weak. I, I believe, I believe. You say, I believe, but here, I don't believe. I believe, but here, I don't believe. I, yeah, I believe. No, I'm talking about a man who believes with their mouth, but they also believe with their heart. That's a strong spirit. He says, a strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and broken spirit, who can raise up? Who can, who can raise up? Let me tell you, if your spirit is weak, even no more flu can kill you. If your spirit is weak, a toothpick can prick you and you get an infection and you die. If your spirit is weak, a banana can break your tooth. If your spirit is weak, bubble gum can choke you. <laughs> Small little thing like this. But a strong spirit of a man, the Bible says, sustains him in bodily pain. You think God didn't know cancer would be there? You think he didn't know HIV would be there? You think he didn't know any incurable disease would be there? He saw it all and he still said, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Elbow somebody and tell them, refuse to crack. The Bible says, if you faint in your day of adversity, your strength is small. Refuse to crack. 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 I don't know who I'm talking to. Refuse. 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 Refuse to crack. Refuse. It hardens you. Harden. It complicates you. Complicate. It exasperates you, exasperate. It discombobulates you, discombobulate. Come on. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. amen. Like this man cannot denounce Jesus. So you don't draw back on your faith. Continue. Because deliverance is always available. I say deliverance is always available. The, the word there was observing. The Bible says they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Do you know what it means to observe? Do you know what it means to observe? Some of you observe. You are very good observers of sickness. Very good observers of poverty. Very good observers of everything. You're just good observers. Observe the word they observe. It's likened to the word when the Bible says that Abraham considered not. You remember that word called considered not. When God told Abraham that you're going to have children, the Bible says he considered not that his own body now dead. He considered. Oh, 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 oh. Somebody got it. He considered not. That his own body was dead when he was about a hundred years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. That when God told Abraham you're going to have a child. He didn't think but Sarah is blind. That's observing. Some of you are very good observers. You find pimples here.
Google. You go on Google. Black pimple. On left hand. And because Google is Google, it's a possible sign of cancer. <laughs> That's why you've begun from. That's why you've begun from. Listen, I talk to people and sometimes I'm like, eh. that is why I tell people, don't diagnose yourself on Google. Google can kill. Do you understand what I'm saying? You will even develop signs that were never there before. Because you're an observer. You lose weight, you have not lost. People are telling you lose weight, but for you, because you've Googled, you'll lose weight. I'm telling you, I cancel people. And somebody tells you, but Apostle Grace, when I read on Google, huh? when I read on Google, they said these are the signs. Then I say, ah, this is an observer like the newspaper. In Uganda, we have a newspaper called The Observer. Does it still exist? Okay. Jonah 2 8. Read. One, two, three, let's go. Forsake their own mercies. Read the message version of it. Uh huh. Those who worship hollow gods, God frauds, walk away from their own true love. This is what God is saying. Every time you choose to observe a false report, it means you're walking away from your true love. God, there are things God has told you that cannot happen to you. Even if you observe them, they are not there. Who has understood what I just said? And it would take too much unbelief and a walk away for you to continue observing them. And then it worsens. 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 Your heart starts to speak. Because when we're talking about, when we're talking about the tongue, some of you think physical. No. Some of you, even your heart speak. The Bible says, you have said in your heart. When Jesus had their hearts, he said, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. You see? So when I'm talking about tongue, I'm not just talking about what your mouth speaks. I'm talking about the meditation of your heart. But apostle, what do you do? You just find yourself thinking. No. Take away yourself from it. You see, some of you don't know how to address these things. Let's just say you have a disease and then you're thinking it's going to kill you at night. Hmm? Instead of just addressing the disease also, address the thought that has said it's going to kill you. Turn to it and say, but you, spirit that is telling me I'm going to die, go! And you'll see it free. Who understands what I'm saying? That's what they call a warrior. That's what they call a warrior. Let me tell you, there are people here who I know personally. If they drew back even one second, they would not be on this ground now. They will be dead. There are people who I know here because I know what they've gone through personally. Was it Tuesday evening? We were called. A church member's kid fell three floors. Poof. Brain cracked. We're having dinner with my wife and they called us. And I told my wife, let me rush there. We went to hospital. Kid is unconscious. In fact, the kid fell. They did not even tell them. I mean, no, they didn't know the kid had fallen immediately. They just came looking for, for the kid to give them food. And they just couldn't find her. And they find her lifeless body on the floor. And the moment we entered this hospital with a, the with a mother, one of the guys who had just checked the kid gave us interesting man. Kodabazega. 
<laughs> we said no. And the kid has a crazy mother. So I say, yeah, I know we can operate. We must. They must say they can't operate my kid. They can't operate. Cracked skull. They can't. Wait. We prayed. A few minutes later, the kids did laughing. They, I think, decided. That was our first resurrection. <laughs> Somebody said, "Amen." But I saw faith. Everybody, there was faith. But my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. I saw something no parent should see. But you're not looking away and your eyes are marked. Oh, that's oh, God, 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 don't crack. Deliverance is always available. There is always an answer. It's somewhere. It, it might, you know, it might not be able, able to, to, to see it. And why? Because you observe a lot. How am I going to pay this debt? How? The fact that you've said how, you are an observer. Where am I going to get this money from? The fact that you can, the fact that you can think where? I was talking to a girl the other day and she told me, oh, where will I find a husband? I said, eh, on this funeral. <laughs> oh, no. ah, ah, ah. You mean here, here, here. <laughs> People crack quickly. People crack, crack quickly. Help your neighbor and tell him, don't crack. <laughs> don't crack. Don't crack. Don't crack. Don't crack. Don't crack. But I'm old, so what? But I'm 60, so what? But I'm 70, so what? Can I have children? Yeah. With God, all things are possible. But the observer observes their womb. The observer observes their age. The observer observes their education. The observer observes their weight. The oh! Lying vanities. Lying vanities. The Bible says in Hebrews, women received their dead raised again. And others were tortured, listen, not accepting deliverance. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. They just refused deliverance. But it was available. There is nothing you're believing God for that does not have an answer. There is nothing you're asking God for that has no deliverance for. It's there. It's somewhere. It's somewhere. It's somewhere. It's somewhere. The money you're looking for, it's somewhere. And it's not only somewhere, but it is waiting for you. <laughs> it is somewhere. It is somewhere. But it's somewhere it is. It is somewhere. It is somewhere. I was in a meeting somewhere. And I met a woman. And the Lord told me the Lord said, ask God to build a house and she fell. The Lord told me, buy a land and build a house. It's somewhere. It might not be me or someone else, but there's somebody like God spoke to me that can speak to somebody for you. 
Ah, uh, and allow me to make this prayer. May God speak to somebody for you. I say may God pronounce something for you without asking, without begging, without sending text messages, without walking with dry lips, with nothing. Without walking with iron clothes, with nothing. You, you're just there and something just comes and somebody says, God has told me that you need this. In my life, I have had people who have come when I needed something and they appeared and said, the Lord tells me you need this. Because I always tell myself, it is somewhere there. It's available for me. The Bible says, the Lord is the portion of your cup. He maintains your lot. Do you know what it means to maintain your lot? It means if it's a wife, yours is maintained. Nobody can marry her. If it's a job, yours is maintained. Nobody can enter it. If it's a career, yours is maintained. Nobody can come into it. If it is a project, it is yours. It is maintained. Hey! They don't cheat us. No, they don't go before us. They don't rob us. No, there are people whom they rob, but some of us, our faith is not moved. Uh, they, they only rob people whose faith is moved. They can only take it away if you had unbelief. But if you hold the beginning of your, confi of, of your confidence steadfast to the end, the Bible says you'll be a partaker of the things divine. I always tell myself, my lot is maintained. Oh, allow me to say some Luganda here. Echange change teba chiba teba chitwala teba chigeya teba chiniga teba chikotogera teba chituga teba chituga tetifa teba chifa chizukira come on for those of you who are watching and you don't understand i meant to say that what's mine cannot be suffocated it cannot be crucified. If it's crucified and dies, it raises again. What's mine? Oh, divine health is mine. Wealth is mine. Peace is mine. Progress is mine. Advantage is mine. Wisdom is mine. Increase is mine. Multiplication is mine. Breakthrough is mine. Favor is mine. Keradogo segetele paladegazo. Meshekete baladoga. The Bible says, but he that endureth to the end. The Bible says, the same shall be saved. He that endureth to the end. The word therefore endure to the end is upomeno. It means abide, stands bravely and calm. He says, he that abides strongly, come and steadfast to the end. That one, the Bible says, will see salvation. In other words, don't be anxious. Ha -ha, they can go before you don't say, oh my God. No, 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 no. Stay steadfast. Bravely come. Waiting on the Lord. Saying it's going to come. It might take two weeks, but it's going to come. It might take two months, but it has to come. It's going to take, I don't care when, but mine, mine will come. It must come. That's how I know that many of you listening to me, you cannot fail. I don't care how much witchcraft is in your family. I don't care who disqualified you. I don't care who wrote you off. I don't care who wrote you out. I don't care who. Even if they cast you. I came to say that you're blessed beyond the curse. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
when you confess, confess like a crazy person. Even when it's worse, you still speak your language. That is what heaven understands. I don't care what's not working. Keep working your mouth. Keep taming your heart. Keep dreaming and writing and Ooh. glory to God glory to God that is what we tell ourselves every day Fanero must grow we are multiplying we are crossing the world we are touching north east west whether it's raining or shining whether newspapers are writing or articles have come out whether funny videos are written we still speak and say that we are more than conquerors by Christ which strengthens us greater is he which is in us than he which is in the world that's the life we live. We don't drop back to perdition. But we are of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Le me era ko. In English, how do you translate that? Harden. Stick to it. That's the English word there. Stick to it. So, from today, Never say you're poor again. Find out of explaining it. Sorry, I would have helped you, but my bank has a system problem. I'm clearing a check. The communication of your faith becomes effectual as you acknowledge every good thing which is in you which is in Christ why aren't you yet married no 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 darling the card is coming are you free in August <laughs> that's a faith person what if August passes and they meet you in September hey how was your wedding no 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 it was just postponed February I'll call you I mean keep speaking Somebody shout hallelujah. But how come you, you're, every day you're speaking and nothing is happening. No, something is happening. You just don't see it. But every day you're confessing and we don't see results. No, 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 no. You just don't see results. But me, I see them. Oh, 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 oh. But then somebody tells you and then we don't see results and then you say, that's right. Ay, 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 ay. You've cut yourself short. So to continue also means to abide consistent. When we told we are going to change the world or we are changing the world, it was not a statement in a sermon. Some of us, that's why some of you are failing because you apply faith. Some of us don't apply faith. We live faith. Because they just shall live not apply. He didn't say they just shall apply faith. He says they just shall live by faith. Some of us don't apply it. We live it. Everything on my life is faith. Come on somebody. My finances are faith. My health is faith. Everything is faith. We live by it. My heart still pumps because of faith. My kidneys are still working because of faith. Cells are still moving in the blood only because of No sugar added. Get to your feet. <laughs> the way you receive Jesus is the way you're going to walk in him. If you cannot denounce him, you cannot confess negative. That's what I want to say. It's working. It is working. It is working for me. My marriage is working. My children are a success. My womb. Women can say my womb is well. Oh, my mind is alert. I am favored. I am blessed. Oh, I'm receiving a phone call. Any time from now. For my next level of progress. Oh, I'm receiving a letter. In a few days. That is going to change my story. In the name of Jesus. Because of me, say it, because of me. 
My father's house is known across the world. Say it. Because of me, my children are not going to be survivors in nations. They are answers. They are kings. They are princes. Oh, because of me, my nation cannot fail. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> I'm telling you, some of us have done things that are so crazy. One time we were in a flight. And, and, and we had a, what do you call it? Turbulence. <laughs> I was sitting next to a church member. He said, eh, this turbulence. I turned and said, don't worry. I'm in the, I'm in the plane. <laughs> don't worry. Apostle Grace is in the plane. Don't worry. Come on. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's the confidence. The bus. Woo! He said, don't worry. I'm in the bus. You know, guys, we have uh, bad news concerning the company. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, poverty in Uganda. Hey, hey, hey. We are here. We will help the economy. I don't, I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know. <laughs> Glory! Now raise your hands in the air and just thank God for this message tonight. Just thank God for this message. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart desire when I love you. You make my life so beautiful And as you are, you have met me here enough There's nothing greater than this That's why I love you forever you make my life so beautiful word is working it's working in our bodies it's working in our families it's working in our lives it's working in somebody's ministry 
the word is working in your dreams it's working in your body it's working in your blood now it's working in your kidneys it's working in your heart it's working in your liver it's in your intestines and pancreas it is working in your projects your consultations it's working in your nation it's working in your household it's working in your spouse it's working in your children you will not fail you will not fail you will not falter you will not observe lying vanities you will not draw back to perdition God is going to do great things in your life I already see that they are happening clap your hands to Jesus if you believe everything that has been spoken tonight clap like a believer clap like a believer thank you Lord Jesus hallelujah hallelujah I'm excited if you're sick in your body you are healed now now take your healing now and write it in your heart that today the 5th of January I am healed and I will never mention this sickness again somebody say amen now one more thing before we close if you're here and you've never given your life to Christ I want to give you the opportunity for everything I have shared and even more than this the salvation of your soul come right now and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior if you're there you want you want to say I, I, you're saying I want to receive Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior come right now and receive him in Jesus name Come on, clap your hands to Jesus as they are coming. Nobody should be moving except those that are coming to receive Jesus. For God so loved the world that he came his only son. So ever believes and not perish, they shall have eternal life. Come, for oh God, so. Those on live stream, we see you. So ever believes will not perish. They shall have eternal for God's love. Singing for God to love the world. God so love the world that He gave His only Son. So ever do not perish. Is our heart. Those of you who
you who are here, from your heart, just repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you died for my sins and you were raised for my glory. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you as Savior and Lord of my life. I'm born again. Change me. Transform me. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, these ones that have received Jesus today, may you change them. May you heal them. May you transform them. May you deliver them. May you answer them. May you reform them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now I'm going to ask for two things. One, you need to come to church and pray. Don't just receive Jesus and no. Keep coming to church and sit in the presence. Number two, you're going to give us only two minutes. I have about 50 people there. We just want to take your names and numbers. I want to follow you up, pray for you, help you understand what it means to be born again. Okay? God bless you. The rest of you see you all tomorrow. And some of you Sunday. I'll be here next week Thursday. So, I will see you. God bless you. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Some of you, no, leave the chairs. Please leave them. Eh? Because tomorrow we have prayers that some of you are trying to stack, and we're grateful because you help us do that. But today, leave them the way they are, okay? Creator of the universe. This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at .org. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Panero, make manifest.